a very powerful and available camera that you already have is the one that you have in your laptop already. You just need to know how to use it. First, if there's one thing that we've learned from this pandemic, it's that nobody looks good with the camera from an angle slightly below. So you take whatever you have at hand and raise the camera up to eye level. Next, lighting. One of the best ways to do this to get a flattering and good lighting with a webcam is to use a window. And see to it to have the light coming from one side. This is of course very harsh, but there's a very simple solution for that. A bed sheet. Much better already. The harsh direct sunlight is much more diffused, but you can still see this very dramatic lighting where one half of my face is well lit and the other half is dark. That I solve with a piece of cardboard. And I place it so it catches the light from the window. With cardboard, without cardboard. And there we have it, a lighting setup using a bed sheet, a piece of cardboard and a webcam. Total budget so far, zero euros if you don't count the computer. Now, if you have to film at night, get two ordinary desk lamps. Place them both at a 45 degree angle from the screen and place the stronger one to one side. This light's pretty harsh, but now you can see how it's lightened up by the weaker lamp that you have to one side. In order to take the lighting to the next level, I thought I'd demonstrate my home studio. And by home studio, I mean this crowded little corner of my basement. The first thing I do is to upgrade from the web camera on my laptop. It's okay, but it's not brilliant. Instead, I'm using my GH5 as a web camera. And the way I do that is through an HDMI grabber, like the Camlink 4K, which delivers excellent quality, but there's plenty of options out there. There are also plenty of options of taking your Android or your iPhone and turning it into a webcam. There are free apps which can do this. Now the lighting setup consists of ordinary desk lamps and light bulbs that I bought at IKEA. IKEA Terzial and Ledare, which is of course Swedish, so it should be Terzial and uh, Ledare. They have the property of having a really good CRI. What that means is that the light is of a high quality. The way that I've set up the lights is a classical three-point lighting. To the one side, I have my key light. I have two lights bouncing off this white wall. On the other hand, I have, like the reflective card that I showed you in the previous section, a light bulb that's reflecting of that wall that lights up the shadows. The third light is the hair light from above. Key light, my fill light, my hair light, and when I put it all together, it looks something like this. A pretty good result for very little money. As for the background, that's a matter of personal preference. If you have a bookcase, see to it to fill it up with Knausgaard and Dostoevsky to show the world how well read you are. Personally, I prefer a more sober, just dark background, so I use a 20 euro pull down curtain from Ikea. So the next concept you need to understand is color temperature. The lights we're using are generally white, but that can mean a lot of things and white light can have different character. So I borrowed my daughter's little kitty to illustrate the point. This is very warm light. It has a low Kelvin around 3000. That's just the way it's designated on a scale. It's also called tungsten. This is the kind of light that I have in my light setup down here in the basement with the Ikea Ladara lamps. It's also what you find in gentrified bars in Brooklyn where they serve 25 types of IPAs. Now this light, while still white, 
is a lot more bluish. It has a high Kelvin. It's called daylight. Think an overcast day outside or a surgical theater where they dissect aliens in a sci-fi movie. In other words, the color temperature can be used for creative effects and dictate what kind of look you achieve. But the thing is, when we see white light, our eyes and our brains adjust. If we walk into that bar and we see somebody in a white shirt, we perceive it as white. If we walk into an autopsy theater and we see a bed sheet that's white, we perceive that as white, despite the light sources being very different. That's how our brains work. Our cameras can try to do that automatically, and it's called white balance. And they generally have a feature called auto white balance. The thing is, if you want to combine footage from different locations, different shots, different times of day, you can get really weird effects. So you need to know what you're doing. If you want more control, go into your camera or, for example, the Filmic app on your iPhone, and you can set the white balance of the ambient light. This is a very powerful tool to control how your footage looks. And I urge you, go out on YouTube and you can find some really good tutorials on white balance and color temperature. In order to show you the next level of lighting, I thought I'd show you my office studio. And by office studio, I mean my really cramped office that I share with another four people where I've crammed in all this gear. One tip is get stronger lights than you think you need. You can always dim them down and you never know when you need more light. Also, get big soft boxes that gives the nice diffuse light. All these principles still apply even as we scale up the production. Use big diffuse light sources of good quality and understand the color temperature and how you can combine them Videography is the art of capturing light. And if you want good footage, you need good light. Good luck.